The last SL astrophysics topic is number six, evolution of the universe. Now this one I really like because we've been talking about the Big Bang and how it seems like the universe is expanding, right? And, and we can see that because of evidence, because of looking at galaxies, they all seem to be going away from us. So it's a natural thing to think about, well, what's the future of the universe going to be? So we could actually do a graph. So this is gonna be a sort of a dodgy graph because we don't know exactly what to put as far as the values here go. So let's say, this is a lousy t here. So time, and this will be size of the universe. Okay, so this is the idea behind this. That we, if we look at the time elapsed, so we're gonna have, at some point in time, we're going to have now. That's us at this point. We know that the universe has existed before us. We're pretty sure it's going to keep existing. Now, we don't know what's going to happen at the end. We don't know if the universe stops or whatever, because this is it's pretty complex stuff, to be honest. And uh, no one really understands this super well. But what's beautiful about this, or I think at least wonderful, is that we can have some ideas about the universe and how it should evolve. And the coolest thing is we just use our laws of physics and our understanding about the universe as we know it to try to predict what could happen later, as well as what may have happened before. Now it turns out the distance from sort of time equals zero, which is again a bit dodgy, but to up until now, it turns out that um, lots of different ways of measuring the age of the universe, they all seem to narrow down to one magic uh, age. So no matter what, it seems like the universe is 13.7 billion years old. So that's what it seems like the age of the universe is. So at the moment, at least, it certainly seems like the universe is 13.7 giga years. That's this G here. That means, uh, you know, billion. So it seems like the universe is 13.7 billion years old. We're not sure why it has to be that number, but it just seems to be that that's the number. But again, it all depends on what rules of physics you're using to determine this. Um, at least in cosmology, we say it depends on what kind of cosmology you use. So what rules are you using to predict things in the future and also to estimate what happened before? But using all of this, we can actually use our understanding of physics to look at three different scenarios. And so one of them is something like this. So let's say we're here now at some point at some arbitrary size. And let's say the universe does something like this. So this right here would be some universe where, now remember, this is now, this is us now. So this means that the universe is going to keep expanding, except at a certain, at a certain time, which we don't know exactly what that time would be, but at a certain time, we would have that the size of the universe would stop increasing. Remember, this is size here, so it would get larger, larger, larger until it stops increasing. And then at that point, it would come back down in on itself, so then it would collapse on itself. So that's one of the ideas of the universe, and we actually call that one a closed universe. Closed. Now keep in mind though, in pure cosmology sense, uh, the word closed and flat and open that I'm going to use are not entirely correct, but uh, for our understanding this works just fine. So we can say this is closed. This means that the universe would eventually collapse back in on itself. This one is often being called a big crunch because you know eventually the universe is going to keep expanding and then stop and then come back in on itself. Another idea for the universe is this one here. Let's see if I can draw it right. So something that goes like this. And then it's basically it's asymptotic to some certain value. We don't know exactly what that value would be, but it would be something that would you know, approach that value but never quite reach it. We call that universe flat. We say it's a flat universe. So that means that eventually the universe will stop expanding and then stay still. It'll just stop expanding. That'll be it. And the last I have of these uh, main three ideas, let's see if I can draw this one here. So this would be something like, something like this right here. So this is a universe that would keep expanding. And notice I tried to make all three graphs pass through this point, which is us now. That's the key thing, right? Because whatever size the universe is now, we don't even know the exact values for this size here. It's hard to even know that. 
but it, it actually doesn't matter. The exact time and the exact size are not the important thing here. The important thing here is to look at these three different ideas and what they represent for us. Now what I want to explain first of all is the shape of these three ideas. Do you notice all three of them? They curve downwards. If you want to use calculus terms, we could say these are concave down. Uh, what that would mean is if we're looking at calculus and we're, doing the, uh, we're looking at the size of the universe versus time, and if we could write some function uh, for the size of the universe over time, then the second derivative would be negative, just to put a calculus spin on this. You don't have to know calculus to understand what I'm talking about. Just notice that all three of these, they open downwards. Right? I mean, a graph can also open upwards, but none of these three do. And the reason is that we understand something about mass, and that is that all things with mass, so my hand here, or some object here, some other object here, if they both have mass, then they will attract each other. You see that and that's due to gravitation. We learned about that with the Newton's universal law of gravitation. Notice the word universal. It means it works for anything in the universe. The one thing with mass should attract another thing with mass, and it's always attractive. So that means every object in the universe, no matter how big the universe is, every object acts uh, to attract every other object. Of course, it depends on how far you are and they attract each other less, but there's still a little piece, which means that, you know, I'm right now being attracted to, um, I don't know, some other object, maybe a chair over there, because we both have mass, so we attract each other. Now, maybe uh, gravity um, is actually winning because uh, there's also Earth that's also attracting me much more than I'm attracting that chair. But every object in the universe attracts every other object due to its own gravitational attraction because everything that has mass attracts everything else. So that explains why all three slow down the expansion. You see, the universe is trying to expand. And what's happening then is that all the matter in the universe is acting to counteract that expansion. No matter which of these three models you look at, all of them still use the same physics, which is that it should slow down because mass slows down the expansion. Now we can go a little bit further. So if you're asked on an exam uh, about open, flat, and closed universe, you're actually supposed to know something else, and I think this is really interesting too. It's something about the density. In fact, I'm going to call a density, I'm going to say rho, because that's the symbol we use for density. Uh, rho c, which is going to be the critical density. Now what this means is this is the magic density that you would need in order to stop the expansion of the universe. In other words, this is the density that you would need, so rho, which would be the density of the universe, if the density of the actual universe is exactly equal to this critical density, then you're going to get a flat universe. Remember what density means. Density is a mass over volume. So that tells you then that, um, well, assuming there's a certain volume of uh, the universe, what's happening then is that um, if you know the mass divided by the volume of the universe, then you know the density. And if it's equal to this exact you know, mass over volume that you would need in order to stop the universe's expansion, then you will, by definition, stop the universe's expansion. Duh. But what if you have just a little bit less? In fact, it turns out if you had just one less atom, just one less, then you wouldn't have enough to stop the expansion. So if you had just a little bit less, so here would be where uh, rho is less than rho c. So if your density is a little bit less, and it could be just a little bit less or a lot less, the result would be the same. As long as your density is less than this magic density, that means you don't have enough mass to stop the expansion. You'd have enough to slow it down. Notice it's always curving down, but it would keep rising forever though still. It wouldn't turn back in on itself. So this is something that would just keep going up and always be curving down, but it would always keep rising. It would keep getting bigger. So this is a ever expanding universe, this one. Remember this one here is a universe that sort of stops expanding and that's that. Whereas what if you have just a little bit too much mass or even a lot too much? Then we say that this is something here with an over density. 
So that would be a closed universe. If you have lots of extra mass, or even just a little bit of extra mass, it doesn't matter, because your density then would be higher than the critical density. If that's the case, you have enough mass to not only stop the expansion, but also to make it come back in on itself. So that would be this big crunch. So these are the three different things that you're supposed to know about for an IB exam.